All right, John, what is up, my man? Not much. How you doing? Doing good. Thanks for uh, taking the time to do this. So, John, you are a producer in San Diego, and we've been working together for, what, coming up on a year? Yeah, I think we started in March. So, yeah, coming up on a year, like 10 months, something like that. Cool. Right. Right on, man. So you are through phase one and into phase two. I um, want to just ask some questions about your experience. And this obviously doesn't have to be a, a sales pitch for me, <laughs> um, but just like a true kind of like what's going on. And, and we'll sort of paint the picture of, of our journey together. Um, why don't we start by just, I guess, describing your situation, what things were like in the business before we met. Obviously, there's a reason you reached out for us to work together. Why? What was going on at the time? Um, yeah, so when I, I reached out, I think I was in a little bit of a different situation than some of the other people, but I had actually just moved back into San Diego and was, um, in some ways, it kind of felt like I was starting back at square one. I had moved out, um, yeah, I'd, mo I'd moved out of the country for a year, and then uh, when I landed back, was trying to get back into the audio work, and I was really starting from scratch. I only had a couple couple clients, couple leads, but um, knew that I had it in me to build this business. And so I just needed to figure out how to do it. So then I, um, yeah, I think that was kind of what was going on as I didn't have much going on. Um, and I was trying to figure out how to rebuild kind of what I had left. Cause when I had left the country a couple of years ago, I was just starting to have some good, good production work, but then I moved. Got it. And yeah. And why was it even important for you to come in and, and build this, this business? Cause it's, it's what I love to do and it's what I'm good at doing. And this is the way that I was going to support my family. Um, you know, music skills are, those are the skills that I have and figuring out how to market them and use them was important. And I wanted to take this time to kind of see what I could do, but yeah, it was important for me because I've got a wife and a kid and I had to figure out how to support them. It's a good reason. Um, so what are, so we've been working almost a year. What are things like now what's your situation like now um and any big wins you kind of want to share <clears throat> yeah um i mean things are completely different now um like i said a year ago i didn't have really any work going on i had the skills i knew that i could do it but i didn't have the work um and now a year later i mean i'm on average pulling in between four and six thousand dollars a month you know, we're starting out 2020 pretty strong. Um, so yeah, I mean, big wins. I, uh, I have, have an artist flying in from London to work with me. I've got, you know, people who I've collaborated with kind of across the U S. Um, and then also locally, you know, most of the artists, I'm now much more connected with the local artists here in San Diego to where it seems like people have seen the stuff that we're doing even through the online marketing but then it's still landed locally to where I've got a number of local clients through this stuff, which is really interesting. So yeah, it's, I mean, it's completely changed my whole career. Awesome, man. Um, what, uh, you know, what were your biggest, I guess, concerns? So, so you knew the situation you were in, you knew where you wanted things to be. Luckily you made the decision to do something and, and that's why we're at where we're at now. But what were like your biggest kind of concerns, you know, hiring a, a consulting company or like really making the step to, to <laughs> this, you know, you made a lot of investment of time and money and mm -hmm. hard work. Um, what was the most challenging part about that? The most challenging part of the work or the most, or like. Um, the uh, making the decision to actually okay. pull the trigger and work together. Okay. Um, honestly, I was just worried that I would never see that money again. And especially at the time, it was a very significant investment for, for me and my family. Like it wasn't, wasn't something that was easy to just, you know, pay out to someone. So yeah, I was worried that that money was just going to be thrown away and I wouldn't be in any better of a situation. So, I mean, that was, that was the worry. Um, 
Yeah. Yeah, I think. Yeah. Sorry. Go, yeah, go on. I don't have any okay. much else to say. <laughs> so yeah, so a lot of people can obviously relate to that. That's one of the most people's biggest worry, and obviously, you know, your whole mindset around money now is pretty different, right? So you know, the mm -hmm. chances of you not seeing that money is very, you know, slim to none, right? Yeah. Yep. Um, but well, I guess what would you tell someone who is worried about that? I know what I would tell them, but what would you <laughs> um, I tell them if they, if they know they've got it in them, invest in themselves. They're not going to regret investing that money in themselves. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. As long as you're investing it in the right place, you're not going to regret putting it into yourself. Yeah. And to throw in my two cents, um, you know, having that, whatever, that money sitting around, but then no plan to make more, like, unless that's the last, unless that's the last, whatever, couple grand they ever want to make, then it's not <laughs> that important, you know, if they, if they're romanticizing that little bit of money, then chance of them earning more is probably very low. So, um, yeah, uh, yep. And that was the mindset that needed to be broken. But yeah. And now look at you with all them fancy synths behind you. <laughs> well, the problem is I had those when I still didn't have any money. So, you know. <laughs> They'll figure out a way to get gear. <laughs> Can't blame them. Got to have your, got to have your tools. Got to have them. Yep. Um, so a couple more things here. One, what, what is the, I guess, sort of, biggest overall thing that you've gotten out of you know working with with us at dark label for a year now what's the biggest thing you've gotten out of it um the the biggest thing is just a mindset towards business um i think before i was just really like you know the oh they'll see how talented i am and come and want to work with me and now i'm much more business minded um towards the whole process um uh, other than that, I mean, it's the money mindset and then also just how to work with clients, like how to handle their concerns and actually take care of them. Um, I feel like I'm a lot better at that than I was, you know, a couple years ago when I was working with people. I mean, it was just all of that kind of goes into the whole thing. But the biggest thing is the uh, just the mindset toward towards running a business rather than hoping things work out. <laughs> right. So you're telling me that when you develop a business mindset, you actually start making money. It sure works that way for me. <laughs> and did developing a business mindset take away from you being artistic or being able to artistically express what you do with your clients? No, it made it so I can express it more because I'm not worried about rent or whatever or any of those things like it makes it so i can be way more present in the studio and put way more myself into the work imagine that awesome <laughs> um and i guess the last thing here is like any advice you would give to someone else who maybe was in your or is currently in your, the situation you were in a year ago um just trying to get things off the ground like what besides hiring us <laughs> right some actual some actual advice yeah what would you what would you tell them they need to focus on um i mean the two things that come to mind because they're just things that i end up kind of reminding myself all the time is like um one of the one of the guys that was in our in our group would always say this uh, thing where you just say recognize it fix it so if you see a problem recognize it quick and fix it i think most of us know where our problems are we just don't want to admit it so like recognize it and fixing it um the next one would just be Love your clients, not the sale, not the money. Love them and the other stuff's gonna come after. Like, you take care of them well, you're you're gonna be fine. Absolutely. Cool man. Appreciate this. Yeah. Happy to happy to chat. Awesome. Thanks, man. All righty.